This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard. The whole thing is available on all major podcast providers. Now, from The Evening Standard in London, this is The Leader. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm David Marsden. The numbers don't lie, and right now it's unclear who the next President of the United States will be. That's not stopped Donald Trump from claiming it's him. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. He went on to say he's going to the Supreme Court to get the counting stopped. That was from a speech he gave in the early hours of the morning at the White House. And with me now is the Evening Standard's Michael Howie. Michael, Mr Trump's statement set things alight first thing, but in a very unpredictable election, it's the sort of thing we'd expect from him, isn't it? It's not surprising, and yet, you know, at the same time, Trump always makes these sensational moments um, that grab the headlines. To, on the one hand, claim victory but at the same time to accuse the Democrats of stealing the vote. I mean, it just doesn't, doesn't add up, does it? You know, so on the one hand, he's, he's claiming that he's obviously already been secured another four years uh, in the White House, uh, but he's obviously sending the lawyers in and going straight to the Supreme Court, he says, uh, to contest, to try to stop some of these uh, ballots that have been arriving after the election, but postmarked uh, before the election, to be counted. I mean, it's, it's the sort of thing you would expect to hear possibly from a, you know, a despot leader of a, a corrupt third world nation, not the, you know, the leader of the three worlds. So we don't know who's won yet, Michael, but one thing that is already clear is that Donald Trump has increased the total number of people who voted for him nationwide from his performance in 2016. That idea that Democrats had hoped for America to reject Trumpism that's not happening. Well, that, that's correct. You know, I think he's he's shown once again that the pollsters are not really to be trusted when you know casting their verdicts, if you like, on on, on elections. Uh, they 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 get it right sometimes, but as we saw in twenty sixteen, the um, predictions of a you know of a landslide victory or just a significant victory for Biden this time round or Hillary last time round um, have clearly not come to pass. I think what we are seeing, however, is um, that, you know, that Biden camp are trying to stay cool. Um, Biden came out, managed to beat uh, Trump to the um, to the punch earlier this morning and said, you know, keep the faith, guys. Uh, there is, I, I would say, more likelihood that um, Biden will end up being the uh, declared the winner of the results of the election. It's going to come down to the outcome in probably three Midwest states, Philadelphia, uh, Wisconsin and Michigan, where in at least two of those states, uh, I think the Democrats genuinely believe that they are uh, going to see it through. Um, and this is this is where Trump is basically threatening to uh, go to the Supreme Court to stop some of these um, early uh, postal ballots from being counted because he knows that most of those are for Biden, uh, not for him. He also knows that his pick for the Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett, who was the replacement for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, got rushed through ahead of the election. So if it does go there, I'd expect there will be a lot of Democrats nervous about how that would turn out. I, I think that's right. You know, I think all bets, all bets are off, frankly. I mean, we've had, um, you know, previous US elections that have been resolved in, uh, in the Supreme Court, uh, thinking back to 2000 when um, uh, it took uh, something like 34 days for the result in, in Florida to be uh, to be declared. So I think we can expect this to be dragged out. Uh, there's a distinct possibility that things will look like Biden has won uh, by the end of the week uh, when uh, Pennsylvania and the other states will have uh, counted the votes that they intend to count and are uh, legally uh, required to count as it stands. Uh, but I think uh, a couple of the conservative justices on the Supreme Court have indicated that they would be open to looking into this issue. So if it does end up in their entry, uh, then, yeah, who knows what's going to happen at the end of the day. Let's say 
as does appear to be happening, that Joe Biden does win this election. And whether there's a Supreme Court challenge to it or not, he does become president in January. What's clear from the electoral map as it stands now is that this is still a very divided nation and he's going to have a tough time pulling that together, uniting them again. That's going to be extremely tough for him. I think a lot will come down to the result in the um, in the Senate um, where... Uh, we've still got a number of um, uh, seats that have still to declare. Uh, so it looks likely at this stage that um, Trump, uh, the Republicans, will retain control of the Senate. But if Biden were able to um, able to turn it uh, blue, he would then have complete control of Congress. So he could actually, um, you know, affect the change that he wants to uh, to bring about in America. However, that as you say, as you as you point to, would not do anything necessarily to uh, heal the the divisions. But then again, you know, Joe Biden is someone whose you know tone and his whole manner um, couldn't really be much further away from Trump's. Um, you know, he's a man who um, genuinely reaches out to try to. Um, to engage, I think, his political opponents, he has done in the past, and he's not going to be that, you know, toxic, divisive figure who seeks to um, exploit the, um, uh, you know, the divisions in society for his own political gain, like unquestionably Donald Trump has done over the last four years. <laughs>